Welcome back to Askewed Reviews. And of course, we are still continuing the Friday the 13th series. Today's film is the 2001 movie, Jason X. Here is your trivia question for today. What is the name of the spaceship where the majority of this film takes place? The answer will be at the end of this video. Our film starts off in 2008, where we are apparently at what's called the Crystal Lake Research Facility, where Jason Voorhees has finally been captured. At this facility, there is a researcher named Rowan LaFontaine who suggests that they put Jason under cryogenic stasis so that they can study him. However, Dr. Weimer, along with Sergeant Marcus and his men, have other, more lucrative ideas for Jason. Jason, of course, has other plans entirely, as he ends up killing pretty much everybody except for Rowan. She does manage to wrangle Jason into one of the cryogenic chambers, and he does get frozen, but not before he manages to stab her and cause her to be gravely injured, but she also does become cryogenically frozen as well. We then jump ahead to the year 2455. Earth has become a barren wasteland, and pretty much everyone has left the planet. But we do have a few researchers and scientists that have come back to examine some things on the planet. Professor Lowe and his team of students are one such group that end up stumbling upon the research facility. They do find Jason cryogenically frozen, and they do find Rowan as well. They bring both of them back up to their ship. Due to advancements in nanotechnology, they are able to bring Rowan back to life. And they assume that Jason is a lost cause. But of course, he's not, and comes back on his own ability. Jason, not even missing a beat after all this time, continues killing as many people as possible on this spaceship. Now, will the remaining survivors of the ship be able to stop Jason before he ends up all alone out in space? This movie was directed by James Isaac. Noel Cunningham is one of the producers for this film, and just so happens to be the son of Sean S. Cunningham, who of course was a director and a producer for the original film. Todd Farmer was one of the screenwriters for this movie. He also played the character of Dallas. By the way, Farmer based most of the film off of the concept of the movie Alien from 1979, and there was also a character in there named Dallas. Several characters in this movie are actually named off of Todd Farmer's online friends that he had in the game EverQuest. Now the character in this film named Adrian was actually named after Adrian King, who was the main protagonist from the first Friday the 13th movie. Director David Cronenberg made a cameo in this film primarily due to the fact that Jim Isaac, the director, was actually a protege of his. Also, the agreement was that he would only be in the film if Jason would actually kill him. They also attempted to get Betsy Palmer to reprise her role of Pamela Voorhees and show up in the simulation room, but she declined the offer. This film would unfortunately be Kane Hodder's last time as Jason, as they did not ask him to come back for either the Freddy vs. Jason film or the remake. The original working title for this movie was Jason 2000. Before going with this story, they did once again try to see if they could finally do Freddy vs. Jason, but that still stayed on the back burner for a few more years. Once Freddy vs. Jason finally did come out, it technically would work as the movie between Jason Goes to Hell and Jason X, as it would explain how Jason got back from Hell, but also would be able to get captured and brought to the Crystal Lake Research Facility. The idea of Uber Jason was actually something they were tossing around when considering ideas for Freddy vs. Jason. Speaking of Uber Jason, it's actually due to a lawsuit that that version of Jason and any maps dealing with the spaceship would never show up in the video game Friday the 13th. And speaking of video games, there's technically a reference to Doom in this movie as they talk about a weapon called the BFG, known in the game as the Bioforce Gun, or known by most as the Big Fucking Gun. Now, before settling on outer space, they were actually kicking around quite a few ideas as to where Jason could be in this next film. There was New York again, going to Los Angeles, going underwater, going to the Arctic, going on safari, possibly even involving a NASCAR circuit. I just find it really funny that they were tossing around ideas for Jason as if he was earnest. 
The biggest reason why they did decide to go with space, and especially with it being in the future, is since Freddy vs. Jason was just on the horizon, it didn't have to connect. Now, they were a little worried about going into space, as other horror franchises that did so, those movies did not do so well, including Hellraiser and Leprechaun. Now, there was some actual talk of doing a sequel taking place on Earth 2, where this film technically ended, but unfortunately, this movie did terrible at the box office. So the body count for this film is 23, but technically, it's quite a bit more than that. You have Private Johnson, who gets killed off screen, the four guards that accompany Dr. Weimer, who get bludgeoned in the head, choked and shot, choked with a chain, and even smacked in the head. Dr. Weimer, who gets impaled through the back with a metal rod. Sergeant Marcus, who gets thrown through a door. Adrian, who gets her face frozen with liquid nitrogen and then shattered. Stoney, who gets stabbed in the gut. Azriel, who gets his back broken by Jason. Dallas, who gets his head bashed against a wall. Sven, who gets his neck snapped by Jason. Condor, who gets impaled on a corkscrew drill. Gecko, who has her throat slit with a machete. Kicker, who gets cut in half by a machete. Briggs, who gets impaled on a spike that's attached to the ceiling. Lou, who gets cut into pieces off screen. Professor Lowe, who gets decapitated off screen. Crutch, whose head gets bashed into a generator and electrocuted. Kinsa, who in a very bad moment of judgment tries to fly away in the escape shuttle and crashes because it's still attached. Waylander, who willingly blows himself up to try to kill Jason. Janessa, who gets sucked through a grate by the vacuum of space. And Sergeant Brodsky, who we thought was going to die fighting Jason one-on-one, -on -one, and even possibly dying due to the spaceship exploding, but instead dies due to the terminal velocity of riding Jason's body down to Earth 2. Now there's also the matter of all of the people who died on Space Station Solaris due to the ship crashing through part of it. Now Todd Farmer has actually given us an actual number. 19,727 people were killed, 207 dogs, 17 cats, 4,713 fishes, 3 gerbils, 14 rats, 1 pony, and 1 Komodo dragon. We also don't know if there was any unnamed students or other members of the crew on the ship that also died. Now there's also these last ones which definitely don't count but are still fun to talk about. There's the two virtual girls from the simulation which Jason puts them into sleeping bags and beats them into one another. And of course, there's the alien creature that gets killed in the simulation. So when it comes to the film Jason X, I actually really enjoy this one. I know it's not a great story or anything, but it is highly entertaining. And it's so much fun to watch Jason being thrown into what feels like a sci-fi channel television series. So I'm going to give this one a 3 out of 5. Now, as for the trivia question from the beginning of this episode, what is the name of the spaceship where the majority of this film takes place? The name of the spaceship in this film is the Grendel, which is named after the monstrous creature from the poem Beowulf. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Askewed Reviews, and if there is a movie you'd like to see get a review, just mention it in the comments.